Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, my name is Steve. Uh, I'm the tutor down here with Fitness HQ and for this today's session we're going to be looking at level 2 circulatory system uh, and as again with the rest of them this is also going to link into the level 3 sports massages uh, courses so you can link them over again. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, aims and objectives again up on there if you want to have a, a quick read of them that's what we're going to be covering. Uh, moving on though we've got firstly we're going to have a quick uh, discussion about the blood and the components uh, that, that are within it. Uh, so the blood cells which we've mentioned, the red blood cells um, which we've spoken about already, they're carrying oxygen around the body. Uh, we've got the white blood cells which we've mentioned about fighting infection. Uh, we've got platelets. Um, as you can see these uh, little little plates within the blood, the picture's quite good there. Uh, they help with like blood clots so um, any time you maybe get an injury, for example, they'll help with fixing it back up. Uh, and then the plasma, which essentially is what's carrying everything around, it's like the liquid based uh, of, of the blood itself. Uh, straw coloured liquid, uh, it's what carries all the nutrients and not everything within the blood around. Yeah. Uh, so that's what's in the blood. Um, the, the blood vessels themselves obviously carry uh, the blood to and from different cells within the body. So we've got three types of blood vessels. We've got arteries, we've got veins, and we've got capillaries, which are mentioned on the respiratory system. Uh, now an artery, um, I always like to think artery is away from the heart. So I'll pop it on here, artery away. So it's always going from the heart to somewhere else. Uh, a vein, so we've got artery away. Vein. In, so it goes in to the heart. So an ICD start, it's very easy to get confused with which blood vessel is which. Uh, now an artery generally carries oxygenated blood around the body. Uh, there is one exception which we'll cover as we go through the circulation shortly. Uh, they work under high pressure. Now the heart is, is quite a powerful muscle, it contracts, it pushes blood out into the arteries. So they work under high pressure, which means they've got a really thick muscular walls to cope with, with the high pressures that, they, that they're carrying. Um, now veins on the other hand um, are a little bit thinner uh, because they're not working under as high pressure. It's generally the muscle pump that you get that is helping push blood back towards to, to in towards the heart. Um, and the, the little trick with veins is they've got little valves. Um, now if you think this is a vein here, uh, blood flow is going up You'll have a little valve, like so, um, and I'm not sure if you can see that from there. Uh, what it, it'll, it'll open as blood goes up, and then it'll close to stop it from falling back down. Um, sometimes what can happen with, with veins um, is if you if you stop exercise really suddenly, all the blood will be pumping down to, let's say, your legs if you're doing a bike, um, and you get off, you stop, and then all of a sudden, your legs go like lead, that's because all the blood's going down, it's not getting the contraction to push back up. Uh, it can create something called blood pooling, um, whereby it's not getting back to the heart, you can go dizzy, you can fade maybe. Uh, not good, hence why we always recommend cooling down, gradually slowing things down. Capillaries, we've, already, we've mentioned a little bit about them already, so they allow for diffusion. Now these are the thinnest and the smallest blood vessels that we've got in the body. So uh, they, they're quite, they've got quite a good surface area, uh, and it's basically it's perfect for allowing gases to, to diffuse through. Um, uh, and they, you know, they, 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 have, they generally come in large networks as well, so uh, it allows for maximum utilisation of oxygen. Uh, so there are different blood vessels that we've got. Um, again, you can put them into a table if you want to as well. Controlling the blood flow. Now, obviously, as you gather when you exercise, you, your muscles need the oxygen, they need the blood. So what your, what your blood vessels do essentially is they open and close depending on where the blood's more needed. So let's say we're on the bike as an example. Uh, the arteries going towards your leg muscles will vasodilate which means they'll get bigger. Think about your eye when it dilates, it widens up doesn't it? So it's the same thing that happens in your arteries. They get wider, it allows for more blood to pass through, get to the muscles quicker, get the blood there, get the oxygen there and use it through, through the exercise. Now, at the same time, certain muscles that may not be used as much um, might be restricted of oxygen a little bit. And that's where we've got vasoconstriction, where the actual artery 
or that the blood vessel will narrow and it won't allow as much oxygen there. For example, the digestive system. When you're, when you're training, it will tend to close off because you don't really need to use it while you're training. So it'll, you know, it'll narrow those, those blood vessels. Uh, and this will be used if, you know, for everything we do in life, depending on where blood flow is needed the most. Uh, so the heart itself, um, generally, it's about the size of a fist, roughly, don't quote me on that. Um, it is central, it's not over here like the, you know, some people think it is, but it is slightly shifted to the left. So it's tilted just left off centre, behind the sternum um, and obviously in the ribs, um, either, you know, in between the lungs. Um, it's, its job generally is to, is to pump blood to the body, but it also pumps blood back to the lungs as well, uh, which we are going to come on to shortly. Um, on, it says here, you know, a little bit of a, a trivia for you, it's got 80,000 and 100,000 times a day that it pumps, um, which you may not realise, but you know, like I said, that would be pretty, pretty awkward if you had to control that, wouldn't it? Um, and then again, he's talking two to three million beats in a lifetime, so um, that's, uh, you know, it's quite a lot of blood that you, your heart's got to pump around the body. Uh, the heart itself then, um, like we've already mentioned, is uh, is a cardiac muscle and it has four chambers. So we're going to look at a little bit more in detail about the, the heart itself. Now, you're probably wondering why there's a box there on the board. That's going to come in handy in a second. Um, so, as you can see here, uh, you've got what the heart generally looks like. Uh, and it's split into the left and right side. And we've got the red side, we've got the blue side, which I'm going to explain shortly. Um, it's comprised of four chambers. So the top chambers we call an atria, or one is an atrium. The bottom chambers we've got the ventricles, or ventricle for one. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through the, the general process of um, blood flow through the heart. Uh, so I'm going to do it on here. Um, I always think this little diagram makes it a lot easier to understand than, than all that. It's, it's quite complicated. So let's talk through it. We'll, we'll get the heart up on its own um, and we'll go from the top section here. We, we've got the lungs to start off with. So the lungs take in the oxygen and the first process is Obviously, it's oxygenated blood at this point. Uh, now, because it's going into the heart, it's going to be a vein. So, the arrow is going in. We call this one the pulmonary vein. Uh, if you see the word pulmonary coming up, it's generally associated with the lungs. Um, so, we've got pulmonary vein. Now, the way you look at the heart when, when you're drawing it out is as if you was looking at it, Mike. So, this is my left hand side, this is my right hand side. So we're going to use this as the left, this is the right. So we've got the upper chamber, so this is going to be the left atrium. Blood flows into that atrium, it passes straight down into the left ventricle. Uh, and from the left ventricle, it then pumps blood out. So it's going away from the heart, it's going to be an artery. Uh, the largest artery in the body, so you can see from here, it's this big red one up here, it's called the aorta. Now the aorta then branches off and it goes to all the different systems in the body. So down here, we'll just call this body. Uh, now all that process is with oxygenated blood. What you tend to find happens is that the body will then use the oxygen and it becomes deoxygenated blood. It's now got carbon dioxide in it. Uh, so the, the right hand side is, is where we've got the deoxygenated side. So from the body, uh, it actually goes back and it flips back to the top of the heart. So this would come up here and it's going to the top chamber. So naturally it's a vein because it's going in. This one is the vena cava. So, vena cava, so if this is the left atrium, this one is going to be right atrium. I'm just going to put RA to abbreviate now that we've established what they are. Uh, from the right atrium, it's got to go down at this point, so it always goes down, so it passes into the right ventricle. 
and from the right ventricle to finish off the circuit there's only one place it can go from here so again it's away from the heart so it's an artery it goes up back to the lungs to close off the circuit almost like a figure of eight on this side um, now that one's a pulmonary vein pulmonary artery this time pulmonary artery, and that, that closes the circuit. Um, one of the main things you need to know really about the circulation is it's, you can all separate into two sections. So from the lungs to the heart and from the heart to the lungs, so this sort of top section here, we class this as pulmonary circulation. So like I said, pulmonary is always relating to the lungs. Uh, now this bottom section where the heart goes to the body and from the body back to the heart, we call this systemic circulation. So uh, Often uh, exam questions will ask for uh, the pulmonary circulation, which is, all, is the top section you could say, versus the systemic circulation, which is down at the bottom. Uh, now, I know that's quite hard, uh, so there's a lot of new words, lots of arteries, lots of veins. Uh, by all means, draw that out, you know, you can use this video to, to go through it. Uh, I like to think it's a little bit easier format than, than doing it off that, which can get quite complicated. Um, so hopefully um, that should be okay, uh, but we can always go through more and more and if you've got any questions on the circulation in particular, which is generally quite hard to get, feel free to comment below and I can get back to any questions you've got. Uh, this then links it up as to what the heart would generally look like. Uh, and we've got some little diagrams there actually which are pretty cool. Um, this is then just backing up the, the two different types of circulation. So a little bit of a recap there for you, uh, if you wanted to go into more detail. And then it kind of puts it together again to your, your pulmonary side, your systemic side. Um, now, as I was mentioning before about blood pressure and work under high or low pressure, uh, generally your arteries work under, under higher pressure, um, veins under lower pressure. Now, throughout your life, you'll always have a blood pressure read. I'm sure most of you have done blood pressure readings in the past. Uh, and you've got your two figures, you've got to use the higher number and a lower number. Uh, essentially, it is the, the, the force of blood that's being you know, pushed against the arteries. Um, and the, the more force that's being pushed through, the higher your blood pressure is, is going to get, basically. Uh, and we can split it up into two phases. We've got the systolic phase and we've got the diastolic phase. So if I pop them on the board here, systolic is when the heart is contracting. So as the heart beats, yeah, that's a systolic phase. So naturally that's the higher figure that you'd get on a blood pressure reading because there's gonna be a lot more pressure being put onto the artery. Uh, now the diastolic phase is, is when the heart starts to relax and it starts filling back up with blood. So naturally it's gonna be a lower figure. relaxation phase there um, and you know this will this will be depending on what you're doing if, you, if you're exercising naturally your blood pressure is going to rise um, we can put that into a bit of a table to show you uh, different classifications of blood pressure so uh, from this diagram here we've got the optimal if you've ever had it done before if you've got 120 over 80 perfect uh, your class is optimal blood pressure however most people will be a little bit off that generally um, so up to sort of 130 over 90 on those phases, if that's the reading you're getting, um, that's pre-hypertensive. It's still in the normal regions, but it's slightly high. Then uh, you've got three stages of hypertension. Hypertension just means high blood pressure. Uh, so you may know someone who's got high blood pressure, uh, and they'll generally may know what stage they're at. Stage one, 140 over 90. Stage two, 160 over 100. Stage three, 180 over 110. Um, the, the way I tend to remember this is, if you think of optimal, if you add 20 each time, that's going to give you each stage of hypertension um, for, for the systolic phase. On the diastolic phase, if you go from optimal, if you add 10, that's going to give you each stage on the systolic phase of each, each phase of hypertension there. Um, 
and that pretty much categorizes blood pressure. Uh, I suppose a key, a key component of this really is if you do have any clients that are in the hypertensive phase, um, it, it maybe you've got a referral to a doctor or they may have already been to the doctor to get referrals um, as you know you need to have extra qualifications to sort of train with these people um, a little bit of an activity then um, on the heart so you can have a go at this um, see what you can remember um, obviously it's a little bit different to my diagram that I did but it gives you an idea of what the heart looks like uh, so you know at this point you can do this we've also got some recap questions to finish it off uh, which is on the next slide, so I'll put that up now for you. Um, have a go at these, I'll see you again soon, thanks.